but going further i'm going to get into a little bit of a presentation um, based upon what i heard in that conversation and I'm going to try to give my my honest critique commentaries and responses based upon what I what I think I heard. And sis, if I misheard you in any way, shape or form, please let me know. I want to be able to have this clear in terms of what you're saying, because I'm going to tell you what I think I hear, what I think I hear. And at the same point, in time, I'm comparing and contrasting the stuff that I've heard Faithful say recently as well. Um, now, Faithful may be changing his tune. I keep hearing a couple a couple of things here and there where he might be changing the tune. I'm not certain, but I'm, I'm going to reiterate what I've heard you say, sis, and what I heard my brother uh, Faithful say in, in the public and compare and contrast. Uh, so let me make sure that everyone can see this. Oh, hold on. Let me do that. Let me get everybody on this one. There we go. So what is this new nationality doctrine from the UA community based upon? So this is what I this is what I took away from the conversation. Again, I'm, I'm not touching on the on the on the Dante stuff, but I am touching on what I think I heard applied to this doctrine that, that is being applied to to anybody who who is of African descent, who claims to be of, is, of, of an Israelite, Israelite heritage. Um, I'm here. I heard I heard my sister talk about that. That God took nationality off the table in Titus 3 and 9 in 1 Timothy 1 and 4. That the doctrine of Christ does not teach nationality. Claiming to be Israel is a heretical doctrine leading to hell. Attaching nationality to religion is a heretical practice. They aren't going to say, when I say they, like this, this is faithful and uh, uh, Sister Cherry. They aren't going to say uh, there weren't black or white Jews. Uh, Israel came out of the land of Egypt as a mixed multitude. Israelites and proselytes could have been on slave ships. Um, and to be clear, uh, I heard Sister Cherry say that she doesn't have a problem if people uh, descend from from proselytes that came off slave ships. So I want that to be to, to stick in stick in your mind right quick as well. Um, it, you as well, Sister Cherry. Please help me understand what you're meaning by certain things here. Um, descending from a proselyte is something shameful. And it makes them not an Israelite. Um, this I, I'm going to need clarified at one point. Um, you, me, we, us, anybody claiming to be Israelites um, of an African heritage ain't no damn Jews. And that's facts. Um, there are real Jews. In the modern nation of Israel. I've heard both faithful and cherry love say this. Now, Faithful will, will, will consistently stipulate that he's not going to say that all Ashkenazi Jews are all Jews in Israel or etc. Mizrahi, whatever. <coughs> Excuse me, that he's not he, he's not going to claim that all of them are Jews. He's going to say some of them, and particularly the ones that, that hold the J the J marker, have have descent from from Jacob. Um. So they so th this is what's getting interesting, right? Is like so. And this is where where people are kind of like their eyebrows are raised and they got a question mark over their head is because it's being claimed that and what I keep hearing is that um, it's heretical if African descent people identify as Israel. Um, and because nationality was taken off the table. However, there are real Jews that exist in a modern nation of Israel. And they confirm this. That doesn't seem to be consistent, uh, cognitively consistent. That's not ideologically consistent or um, uh, logically consistent. Uh, we're going forward. So this, this this is me trying to walk some stuff out in terms of, of just being uh, logically consistent on what's being said and what I, what I think I'm hearing. If nationality and skin doctrines are heretical and you are arguing the point in good faith, then your principles should apply equally in the religious world of Christians and Jews, etc. I.e., you should be all you should be equally condemning these groups here: um, Irish Catholics, um, Roman Catholics, Greek Orthodox, Syrian Orthodox, Syrian Orthodox, 
Coptic Orthodox, Eritrean Orthodox, Ethiopian Orthodox, um, Armenian Orthodox, Russian Orthodox, George, Georgian Orthodox, British Orthodox, and Arabian Christian churches, etc. Um, for the mere fact that they're attaching a nationality to their, their church and orthodoxy. Uh, that would only be ideologically consistent. And if it's not, if you think that it's not, I need to understand why. Because I keep hearing people say like, well, no, well, the Israelites are attaching, uh, attaching to salvation. Well, not people like Dante, not people like anybody that was in the war machine. So I, we need to like, so if, if it doesn't apply to these people here, then why would it, why would it apply to, 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 uh, to Messianic Israelites, et cetera, who aren't making things a nationality, doc, uh, a salvation doctrine. Uh, and, and, uh, aren't excluding anybody from salvation. Um, and aren't saying that anybody has to has to accept them being Israel in order for them to have right standing with God. So if if there's a group of people not saying that, why apply um, the rhetoric that's being applied to them? Again, so if if uh, the principles and doctrine are going to be consistent, you also have to to call out these aspects and things here. Any and all artwork historical and modern that shows Christ or biblical figures with the skin color very much so like how the Muslims do things in the sense of like they, they, they feel like um, any kind of pictures of prophets and biblical figures is, 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 is not, is not a cool thing. Um, but yeah, if you're going to be consistent, you gotta be, you, you gotta be against any kind of visual artwork, modern or ancient or historical that, that depicts anybody from the Bible with the skin tone. Um, because, because that that would be a skin doctrine. We shouldn't be talking about anything skin skin based at all. We shouldn't be showing anything skin based at all. Um, none of that type of stuff. And just like above, we shouldn't be acknowledging any nationality at all. Not not just Israel, any nationality. Um, in order for to be consistent logically, you would also have to be going at all Messianic and Jewish groups, or, or all Messianic Jewish groups for not just being called Christians. For daring to be identified as Messianic Jews as uh, as well as Christians, because there's nothing different between a Messianic Jew and a Messianic Israelite. Literally, no difference in the concept. Particularly when you see people like Dante, who break down a statement of faith to where like he's literally a straight Christian. Now, there's 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 ideological differences you have with with other Messianic Israelites. Like some that don't believe in in uh, in uh, the virgin birth, some that don't believe in the Trinity, etc., etc., etc. However, there are Messianic Israelites who don't believe anything different than a Messianic Jew, and and people like Dante. So if 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 that's the case, why why this smoke for people who are who are Messianic Israelites that have no different belief than a Messianic Jew, but you're not going at a Messianic Jew for calling themselves a Jew? It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. You're not you're not telling a Messianic Jew that they're racist and that they're teaching a heretical doctrine um, that's leading to hell. Um, in order to be consistent, you'd also have to go at Jewish rabbis and preachers that teach African-Americans are Israelites. Like so you have uh, like like the Rabbi Shapiro's and whatnot, you have like the uh, Rabbi Harry Rosenberg. Etc. You got people like Matthew Dolan, etc. Preacher out in Australia would not break it down. You also got to go with Jews that teach a skin. Or, so check this out. Like, so, like, most Orthodox Jews, right, that rock with the Talmud, etc., would believe this concept that's taught there. That they teach that Israel, Israel was the color of boxwood. They also have a curse of ham dealing with black skin, right? So either or would be a skin doctrine that you should be against. And you should be going at any Jew about that. Any and all Jews about that. You shouldn't be going just at Israelites and Messianic Israelites at that to talk about um, like David was ready or my skin is black upon me. Do not hate me for my blackness. Or people resembling Egyptians, etc. Like that's that's not so people saying that they believe that that um the original stock of Israel was was a, a dark skinned people or an Afro Asiatic people, 
that's not a that's not like a heretical skin doctrine. And if it again, if it is, then you definitely need to be going to people who are saying that they're boxwood or that there's people being cursed in, in their in, in their skin changing colors or whatnot. And on top of that, you need to go at, at people like the ancient watchmen who are an Israelite group that that deal with uh, that. Again, they're Hispanic and, and, and Native American. Right. And uh, and they teach a yellow skin doctrine based upon like the the, the skin of bronze concept. The burnt brass concept. They believe that they, they teach that the Israelite skin tone is a yellow. One. So they speak Lashon Kadash, all that type of stuff, right? But Faithful said he's not going to go with them in particular. That he he refuses to go with them. He said he's cool with Jose Vega. Maybe because they're both maybe because they're both Puerto Rican. I don't know. I can't call. It. No idea. But he says he's not. He he told me he won't go at ancient watchmen because um they don't teach that nationality is attached to salvation and they don't teach that you have to accept that they're israelites in order to have right standing with god well again if that if that's going to consistently apply then why are you, why 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 the conversation with the hooking on that went down why the conversation why, why consistently go with dante consistently consistently still going to dante like so from what i heard um uh faithful uh, apologized to you who cannot from what i understand about how he came at him recently now we try to come in him sideways talking about try, trying to talk like he changed his position or whatnot but no like you who cannot never changes so he, he tried to say that you who cannot dealt with with uh, the y dna concept he told this to me and the you cannot right now who can i didn't correct him but i'm gonna correct it i'm gonna i'm gonna tell you flat out like so i've known you cannot for three years and nowhere have i ever heard him say anything about some y dna stuff he's always talked about autosomal always 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 talked about autosomal and he's never had a salvation doctrine to where nationality was connected to it um he believes in the virgin birth etc all them type of things he's a messianic israelite who, ha who has legitimate dna that goes back to the middle east <laughs> legitimately so there's no there's no reason to have these kind of these kind of conversations with people like him um, there's no reason to have these conversations with people like Gideon. There's no reason to have these conversations with people like 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 uh, Yara and myself. There's no reason to have these conversations with people like Dante. If you're not going to go at all these other people. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Now, again, literally all the people I'm talking about don't agree with one West doctrine. All the people I mentioned, Dante, all the people I'm, we don't we don't agree with one West doctrine. But yet we're being labeled as if we do agree with one of us, doctor. And that's that's where this is getting sticky. That's where people are saying, well, we don't really want to deal with y'all because um, you have get you got getting saying he don't want to deal with with, uh, with with Jerry. You got Dante saying he don't want to deal with nobody in the U.A. You heard me saying up until recently, I couldn't stand faithful. And for good reason. Faithful had faithful recognized he had to apologize for coming at me all kind of sideways. Again, Faithful didn't know me from nobody on the street. And he was he, he had my he had my name in his mouth on his channel talking about like, oh, see, the war machine shouldn't even be people people in war machine shouldn't even be uh, 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 dealing with the with with Orthodox more because he's a Muslim one. I was like, bro, do you even understand what we're doing? Did, did you understand? He didn't he didn't do a single video breaking down what we actually believed in as a group. We had we had a we had a core set of beliefs that we rock with that we were defending and, and, and dealing with. No one even addressed that. He he was saying, no, they they uh, that they shouldn't even do me because I'm a Muslim. I'm like, oh, word. Okay, cool. So I reached out to him. And within 90 seconds, he's trying to tell me what I'm allowed and not allowed to believe as a Muslim. And so right off the top, I'm like, because I, I started the conversation. I'm like, hey, man, check this out. I know you probably think I have certain belief systems, but I don't come from a Hadithist school of thought. I'm a Quranist, i.e. I believe different things than people like the average Sunni or Shia believe, etc. I start breaking down my beliefs, like like one of them being that I believe that the, the, the Arabic of the Quran the Quran uh, uh, shows that, that Jesus died on the cross. And I literally debate Muslims on this. And I wash them on it. Easy. Easy. And he was trying to tell me I'm not allowed to believe that. And so, like, if you try to tell me what I am and I aren't allowed to believe it, it, it ain't going to go over too well. So, like I said, within 90 seconds, we was beefing and the conversation was over. Within 90 seconds. I had no reason to do a faithful after that. Like, he, it wasn't, there was no good faith. Like, I didn't see him as a good faith actor. Now, my man proved himself like he proved himself different at this juncture. He came back and apologized to me, apologized to Huguenot. So from now, right now, I got to give him the benefit of the doubt. So he shows me something otherwise. 
But at the same point in time, he like, here's what I'm seeing. Like Faithful still doing videos on Dante. Going at Dante. But my man told me he's not going to go to Ancient Watchmen. Now, that's not, that's not consistent. That's not that's not seeming consistent to me in any way, shape or form. And so either my people like like Sherry Love and, and, uh, and Faithful that recognize this is inconsistent or they think it's consistent. It can give me an, an explanation as to why it's consistent. I, I'm, I'm listening with both ears. I'm not condemning nobody. Any t- like, please, I want to understand. I want to understand. We're going forward. So, Cherry said this concept of Israel, if it look uh, about Israel coming out as a mixed multitude, not denying people being black or white, etc., 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 not denying the proselytes, etc., 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 all that type of stuff, right? So, implications of all that, right? If Israel came out of the land as a mixed multitude and the exception clauses exist that even faithful to God recognizes in numbers and in, in chronicles, right? And again, those, those are back on the conversations we, you can see me having with him and Yuhukanon to where, to where uh, he's citing um, he's citing the lineage of, of, of a man who had no sons um, who only had daughters who ended up marrying his daughter off to an Egyptian and then the the children of, of, of that lineage of that of that of that of that union were counted as as the the first man's lineage. In terms, they were all counted as Israelites. So it was an Egyptian man and an Israel Israelite woman, but they were counted as Israelites within the tribe of Judah. So there's an exception clause for this, right? And so even faithful recognizes this. So again, if Israel came out of the land as a mixed multitude, and the exception clauses exist that even faithful to God recognizes. And it is not consistent to say that Israelites and proselytes could be on slave ships that came to America, but it's facts that we ain't no damn Jews. What are your facts? That's a that's a fair question. That is a super fair question. And I'm going to break down why it's a fair question. So DNA found in Egypt and Israel circa 3000 BC, or BCE, before the common era, shows evidence of J1, J2, E1B1A. E1B1B and R1B. That could be the mixed multitude right there. That could be the mixed multitude right there. And and that that exception clause and faithfully admitted to this admitted this to me on the phone, like on a call on 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 on, uh, on Facebook, right? He admitted that that in the argument that me that me and, and this is part of the reason why he apologizes is, is when he went back and analyzed the arguments me and, and Yuke and I were saying because we both said the same thing, same same, almost verbatim. He recognized he was like you know what. That Egyptian man could have been any one of those haplogroups. He could have he like he could have been E one B one A. He could have been E one B one B. He could have been R one B. And so he was like, you know what? I can't I can't I can't even argue against that. And so there could be any one of those 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 lineages within the mixed multitude. So again, if that's if that's the case, then what's the issue with 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 people connecting to that? Because that could like again. And particularly if we all aren't E1B1A, that's something I'm going to be getting into um, specifically because I went back and reviewed some videos to where I believe the sis got some some misguided information from Brother Ngozi. Um, I went back and listened to, to the videos with Ngozi and Salam, et cetera, whatnot. Um, shout out to both of them, Salam and Ngozi. Um, however, um, in in reviewing the, the, the information there, uh, Ngozi said some very... He, I, he misled the people. I don't think he intentionally meant to, meant to, but the picture he painted was that African-Americans are only E1B1A or R1B. That we get an R1B from like the slave master or or, um, or we get E1B1A from the people we come through, uh, come from West Africa. And that is not the case. Um, as a matter of fact, um, Sister Cherry Love shows a presentation where people comment on, where, where people on Garfield's channel actually try to back up Sister Salam on what she's saying. And they use a Fulani man um, to 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 prove their point in Jed Match, who 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 they say is coming up with false positives. I'm going to be doing a whole series on that to clarify this whole thing about DNA and Jed Match and all them kind of things and whatnot. Um, because what's really interesting is me and that man that they showed have the same haplogroup, and it's not E1B1A, and we're both Fulani, and Ngozi's also Fulani. And go and goes, you know, it's exactly what, I'll be, what I'm talking about. And in fact, my brothers have talked to him and goes, I've talked to him and goes. And so um, I've talked to Salam. I'm still talking to Salam. Um, 
I've invited Salam to come on on Debate Toffee multiple times. She's agreed to come on. She's being he she's being hesitant now. Um, she saw she saw my uh, my videos of, of my Jed match results. Um, and to, again, like so she told me personally on, on a live that because of my mixture that I should use the MDLP. Um, and so I showed her my like I did a video where I showed her my my uh, my MDLP results, my Ethio Helix results, as they were telling the the the. The UA was telling all the Israelites that they need to use the Ethel Helix results, the, the Ethel Helix projects. Um, and and uh, Jedimatch was saying that they could use the, the MDLP and the, the DOCAD. So my MDLP, my 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 Ethel Helix, and my DOCAD results all say I have a, a Ethiopian Jew in my first, in my single person population, in my single population uh, distances. In my single population distances. So she seems to be a bit apprehensive at the moment to come on and, and, and try to break down why that is. Um, Faithful said he's got a, he's got a video coming out breaking down Jed Match. Um, I'm look I'm really looking forward to that because uh, I tried to, I tried to talk when I tried to talk to Faithful I wanted him to use me as an example in my genetics and from Jed Match as an example and he and he wasn't trying to hear that right off the top he was trying to he stick to his point but we're gonna we're gonna have a conversation about DNA uh, we're gonna have a conversation about the pubes or whatnot. And so I, I would I, I, I would really like to get into what he's thinking about and what he's talking about concerning Jed Match um, and break that down with my genetics in particular. And I'm going to show why in a second. Um, going forward, if Adam Coleman is going to claim Islamic sources, Adam Coleman is a, is a, is an urban apologist. If Adam Coleman is going to claim Islamic sources to prove Christians existed in West Africa prior to Columbus. Um, then those same sources apply. Speaking of Israelite and proselyte, proselyte populations in East Africa, Central Africa, West Africa, North Africa, and Southern Arabia, there are many, many, many sources that speak to such. And a lot of what I do, like I talked to Salam, I asked, I asked her if she was uh, familiar with these migrations. I talked to Faithful, I asked him if he was familiar with these migrations. Um, the truth is, no, not really. And these are early migrations. A lot of what they know is from like, like 11th century to like the 15th century, all the time. Yeah, cool. Got you. There's there's a lot of history to talk about. And that's documented like that, 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 that ended up. So when 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 Islam went to West Africa, North Africa, etc., cetera, um, and took Arabic with them, there were a lot of languages that were able to get written down in Arabic at that juncture. Um, and so there's a lot of things that got chronicled. Um, and so there's a lot of people who also went around and was taking down histories of people and whatnot. Um, so if, and so if these Islamic sources and Arabic sources are going to be used to prove Christians existed in West Africa prior to Columbus, then those same sources apply. Speaking of an Israelite and proselyte population in East Africa, Central Africa, West Africa, North Africa, and Southern Arabia, um, prior to Columbus, etc. Uh, and I'm, I'm talking about of like Afro Asiatic descent. A lot of people like to push this, this, this concept of like the only Jews in West Africa were, were from the Iberian Peninsula and all like, no, nah, that's not even close to truth. And, and in truth, it, like when you understand what's going on, a lot of them Jews that came that are in the Iberian Peninsula came from Southern Arabia, East Africa, etc. There's a good chunk of them that do do that. And on top of that, some of us, like myself, have DNA that reflects these very same migration patterns. These very same migration patterns. Going forward. If you love African people and would never say there are not black Jews, it does not make sense to only demonize African people for identifying as Jews, etc. Um, again, there's no other like if you're not going to demonize Messianic Jews, it, it, it doesn't make sense in any way, shape or form. It doesn't make sense in any way, shape or form, because they're not attaching their nationality to, to their religion in any different way than what the, than what uh, people like Dante um, and myself and Yahukanan, Yara, and Anonymous Hebrew, and Gideon are. No different. And faithful to God has already said he won't address Hispanic and Native American Israelite groups like ancient watchmen that teach a yellow skin doctrine. They that, that teach that gypsies are the are the real Levites. They speak La Shuam Kadash, just like the one with the Israelites, and teach that on, the only way African slaves could be Israelites is if they mixed with native natives and Hispanics i.e. that the natives and Hispanics are the true Israelites, right? Um, they, they teach that most natives are Israelites. And that, the, again, the only way... So so Cherry Love said that she's, um, um, she she was cool with the concept of Israelites and proselytes coming, coming off the slave ships, or at least proselytes. 
Um, Faithful said in in in, a, in in the concept of a vast minority, he believes that the Israelites could be on uh, on on the slave ships, etc. Right. Um, however, like people like the Ancient Watchmen, like a Hispanic um, Native American Israelite group, they teach that the only way that African slaves could have come off them slave ships um, and become Israelites is if they if they came off the slave ships. And again, this is on my channel. If they came off the slave ships and mixed with natives and Hispanics, that's the only way. That's the only way. And again, neither Cherry Love, and I'm going to play a video real quick. Now, the Cherry Love nor Faithful to God will address the growing population of Hispanic people. And I, and again, I, the majority of people in the UA, I don't see hearing about, I don't hear nothing about this, right? Will address the growing population of Hispanic people in the Americas, in the Americas, leaving Catholicism and Christianity because they are finding out that one quarter of Hispanics in the Americas are at least 5% Sephardic Jewish. That's up to 200 million people. They are leaving and joining Messianic Jewish congregations, Seventh-day Adventist congregations, and Orthodox Jewish congregations. I'm not hearing a word about this. And this is what I'm saying. So if the concepts are going to be consistent, they got I got to see equal application. This. I got to see the same amount of videos are going on about this and about Irish Catholics and about Ethiopian Orthodox uh, 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 Christians and all that type of stuff. Um, and the artwork and, and ancient watchmen and all these other people. I got to see the equal amount of videos on them that you're putting out on on uh, One West and Dante and all them type of things. You know what I'm saying? It's it's not it's not being consistent right now. It's not being consistent. But real quick, I'm going to play. A video. That's showing what I'm talking about concerning this this. Uh this uh hispanic jewish concept i'm gonna stop sharing this put myself in At a Hanukkah celebration in 2018, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, the popular Puerto Rican congresswoman from New York, surprised a small crowd by announcing that she has Jewish ancestry. My family uh, consisted of Sephardic Jews. Later that same week, a groundbreaking study came out of Latin America. After testing DNA samples from 6,000 randomly selected people across the region, researchers found that 23% of them had at least 5% of their DNA from Spanish Jewish heritage. Back in 2015, the Spanish government announced that they'd grant citizenship to any non-Spaniards who could prove that they are descendants of Jews who were expelled from the country in the 15th century. By late 2019, Spain revealed that they had received 127,000 applications. The most popular countries? Mexico, Venezuela, and Colombia. All this points to one big question. Why do so many Latin Americans have Jewish heritage? To understand the answer, we've got to go back to the year 1492. Two huge historical events took place that year, and both had serious lasting consequences. First, Spain started to colonize the Americas. And second, back on their side of the Atlantic, the Spanish government enacted the Alhambra Decree, which forced Jews to either convert to Catholicism or leave the country for good. Spain had already been murdering or forcibly converting Jews for over a century. That was part of the Spanish Inquisition. But this was the final nail in the coffin. Now, Jews had only two options, get baptized or get out. Nobody knows exactly how many Jews chose the second option and fled. Keeping a census of Jewish citizens wasn't exactly a priority for medieval Spain. On the low end, some historians think it was tens of thousands, though others think it could have been as many as one million. Regardless, it seems that most of Spain's Jews decided to stick around and agreed to become Catholics. But not all Jews handled the transition the same way. Some weren't very religious to start with, so changing creeds wasn't such a hard choice given the alternative. These types of converts became known as New Catholics. Others were determined to practice their Judaism in secret. They were called Maranos, but today that's generally considered a derogatory term. And the phrase crypto-Jews has become more popular. In Hebrew, both groups are called Anusim, which means people who are forced to abandon their Judaism. And in English, they are known as conversos, literally people who converted. Regardless of the name, back in the 1400s, the Spanish Inquisition and later Spanish policies had one goal when it came to Judaism, eliminate it. At the same time, Spain ramped up its colonization of the Americas. 
Over the next four centuries, millions of Spaniards arrived on the shores of the New World. Even though the government tried to restrict the movement of conversos, it was really difficult to keep track of them, since they were, after all, Catholics now. Many conversos wound up escaping to the Americas, hoping to start a new life. But the Spanish government caught on and sent agents of the Inquisition to the American colonies to locate undercover Jews. When they found them, they burned them at the stake. Despite the dangers, lots of conversos held on to Jewish traditions in private. Some lit candles on Friday nights, others refused to eat leavened bread around Easter, which always falls within a few days of Passover. As generations passed, the descendants of those original conversos began noticing curious things about their families. Like, why do we place stones on our family's graves? How come mom never cooks pork like everyone else? And why does grandma refuse to travel on Saturdays? Today, with DNA tests that are popular and affordable, more and more Latin Americans, from the southern tip of Chile to the deserts of New Mexico, are discovering that they have Jewish ancestry. Their reactions are diverse. Some are happy with the Catholic faith and the culture they were brought up in. Others blend their Judaism with Christianity. For example, the Adventist Church, which has many Latin American members, combines elements of Judaism into Christianity, such as observing the Sabbath on Saturday. But others choose to embrace their heritage. Some even convert. For those who do, their genealogy can be a ticket to a new life. On top of Spain's repatriation plans, Israel has its own law of return, which offers citizenship to Jews around the world. The country's Ministry of the Diaspora is exploring ways to make it easier for conversos to make Aliyah. What began as a tragedy in the 15th century could today become a multicultural boon for the Jewish homeland. It's also a testament to the strength of the Jewish identity after hundreds of years of persecution. Even though conversos haven't had it easy, their story is a fascinating and important one. With the rise of simple DNA tests and a growing interest in heritage and identity, more Latin Americans and people around the world are learning just how complex their identity and heritage really are. Discovering our shared ancestry can help us better understand history, both on a personal and global scale. And hopefully, with that knowledge, we can overcome the intolerance and prejudice that have divided religions and cultures for thousands of years. So, yeah, I'm not seeing any, any discussion on this concept from the urban apologist community, particularly the, the Spanish-speaking ones like, like, like Faithful. Like when I talk, I talk, I literally talked to Faithful about this. I asked him, do you feel like there's more, um, that there's more one West Israelites coming out to Hispanics in the Americas or that there's more Jewish rabbis coming out to Hispanics in America? He told me one West Israelites. I was like, wow, you're kidding me? Nope. He was dead serious. I'm like, okay. Like, so I know he's not even like, he's not even like aware of this thing. And it kind of makes sense to me because he's Puerto Rican, right? Um, which he shouldn't be if if this doctrine is consistent. He shouldn't be Puerto Rican. He should just be a Christian. Um, but he's a Puerto Rican. Um, and this concept of the people waking up in the Americas that are 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 calling themselves Jewish and Hispanic are more in the continental Americas. Um, and as a matter of fact, like they say, that, that, that it goes from from uh from the tip of peru to to all the way to the to the uh to the deserts of new mexico well my mother actually descends from these people right my mother descends from these people and that's so you know what let me let me get into that part in a second I'm, you know what i'm gonna hit that part now and then get back to some other things so my mother descends from crypto Jews whose DNA shows a migration from Ethiopia, Yemen to North Africa, to the Iberian Peninsula, to Mexico, and then to America, like as in New Mexico. When I claim Jewish descent from my mother, nobody in the urban apologist community challenges me on my lineage or calls me a racist heretic. My father descends from West Africans who were historically Muslim, but also have oral traditions that say they descend from biblical people like the people of Sheba. My father's DNA shows a migration pattern in Africa of east to west, connecting Sudan, um, Ethiopia, uh, and, and Kenyan, uh, Kenya migrations. And this includes ver uh, verifiable ties to Ethiopian Jews in all the, the in all of the Jed Match Ethio Helix projects that the UA told us to use. Now, 
what's interesting about this is like so my mother comes up ethiopian jewish in all the in all the the Jed Matt, uh, ethiopian helix projects my mother's brother also comes up uh, ethiopian jewish they're phenotypically spanish or hispanic etc they're phenotypically mediterranean um my uncle has it has a he has an e1b1b natufian uh, uh marker um and also has some 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 trace genetics from from east africa south africa etc whatnot um but here's the interesting part i test for ethiopian jew in the ethiopian project as well but i test closer than my mother and my uncle i test significantly closer and so the only way i can test closer consistently is if i get it from my father's side as well And what I've been able to also uh, uh, show is that my cousins from my father's side also show connection to Ethiopian Jews and the Ethiopians. So there's something there. However, if I were to claim Jewish descent from my father, just because he does, he's a descendant from slaves or whatnot, it seems like so, some people in the urban, urban, urban apologist community would call me a racist heretic pushing a skin doctrine sending people and myself to hell those are some really uneven scales man really uneven scales so on the one hand i can claim descent from my mom and it's cool no one questions no one a no one questions my lineage no one says prove it faith was not out there saying prove that i'm a sephardic jew or i'm a, a, a maghrebi jew via my mother no one's saying that the moment i say it it's instantly accepted the moment I say, yeah, my mom descends from this population, instantly accept. Can I can I show genetic ties? Yeah, 100 percent Can she show genetic ties? 100 percent But no one's even asking for that. And the cold part is if they did, the genetic ties would show the same migration patterns that my father's DNA showed. From East Africa to West Africa, from East Africa to North Africa and West Africa, all that. So, like my mother's DNA, my father's DNA in the same places around Africa. Verifiable. And again, go check out my go check out my uh, my haplogroup videos where you can go see my my E1A. Um, where you can go see my grandfather's E1B, uh, E1B1B, where you can go see my uh, my my uh, my Native American mitochondrial DNA, all that. My E2G uh, mitochondrial DNA. Go check out all that. But if I were to claim Jewish descent from my father, who show again, who verifiably shows in the Ethiopian Helix part projects that 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 there is a connection with with Ethiopian Jews, same as that Fulani brother I might add. Um, I would be called a racist heretic pushing a skin doctor and sending people and myself to hell. <laughs> again, those are uneven scales. So if Sister Cherry Love and Faithful to God truly love African people and truly don't have an issue with, <laughs> with the possibility of Israelites and proselytes being on slave ships or there being black Jews in the mixed multitude of Egypt, then it should be just as acceptable for me to claim an Israelite heritage and celebrate Passover and the Sabbath, etc. As, uh, 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 as, uh, uh, as it is for me to claim my Fulani and Yoruba heritage and practice the Islamic custom of Ramadan, like Cherry cited. Like Cherry cited, anything else is just plain prejudice and bigotry that can't be substantiated with honest logic and reasoning. And I want my family to hear this. Sis, I want you to hear this. Anything else is just plain prejudice and bigotry that can't be substantiated with honest logic and reasoning. There's no reason why I can, I can claim being a Muslim from my father's side, but I can't claim being an Israelite from my father's side. There's no reason why I can claim being a, a, a why I can celebrate Ramadan with that Islamic background, but I can't celebrate Passover and Sabbath and it'd be okay. And it'd be okay. But let me go back one right quick. If urban apologists are sincere about dealing with, with the Israel only salvation doctrine, then we shouldn't expect to see them demonize Messianic Israelites that agree with urban apologists on salvation and also debate one West camps and the conscious community atheists. 
we should be able to have peaceful, edifying dialogues about doctrinal differences where we can at least respectfully agree to disagree. Gideon, Yehukna, Elder Yara, myself, we're all part of an interfaith group. Like I told you, called the War Machine, the Alba War Machine, that included Christians like Minister Howell and G-Con. We defended the Bible against One West Doctrine and Conscious Community, New Age Doctrine that had people burning Bibles. Like, fam, this, is, this isn't this is some fake stuff. This isn't some fake stuff. They were burning Bibles, going in on, like, going in on how anti-African it was. They were going in on, 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 on how brainwashed we were to deal with the, with the, with the, with the slave master's book, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There was a gang of people. It was literally a group of people, a group of people that burnt the Bible. And we're encouraging people to do so. That was the initiation into the group was to burn the Bible. And there's like saying power to the dark side, et cetera. That was their thing. But this is what I'm seeing so far, even going at one West doctrine on salvation and working with Christians to defend the Bible is getting us called heretical racists that aren't saved just because we identify as Israel. That seems to be very, very, very disingenuous. Very disingenuous. So at this juncture, I'm already going to make this thing way too long. Um, I'm going to get into something she was asking Dante for. Dante said she, he didn't really want to entertain her on the thing because he, he was like, man, I don't, I don't really see you dealing with the scrolls like that. Um, I don't really see you dealing with Christ like that. But she said, I want to see this nationality thing from the doctrine of Christ. I want to see that. And so we're going to get into something. I'm like, so something that me and my brother literally get into we, and, and debated vocab on this topic, right? Is we have something that we, we put together, like me and my brother Yara, uh, my brother Anonymous Hebrew, we got something we put together called... Uh, called remnant theology or remnant covenantalism, either or, however you want to deal with that, right? Um, and we literally have this as a counter theology to replacement theology and and the progressive covenantalism that particularly vocab puts out there. Like I said, Yara debated vocab on the, on the, on the, on the two particular topics, right? On the two particular doctrines, right? Uh, you can go back and see them on the debate talk for you. I moderate that, I moderate that debate. But we have we literally have a doctrine breaking this part down. And so um, the sister says she wants to see it from the doctrine of Christ. And so I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to break down to where how I see what she's saying is not there and how I see what we're saying is there. Um, and sis, if you want to if you think I'm incorrect on any of this, please feel free to correct me. Please feel free to, to, to let me know what's up. And please feel free to, to have a conversation with me on the topic. We can like I said, we can always go build on debate talk for you. I'm going to have a respectful dialogue because ain't no one going to disrespect South's platform. Um, but going further. So the sister said that Titus 3 and 9 and 1 Timothy 1 and 4 um, take nationality off the table. And they say, but avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable in vain. Neither give heed to fables and to endless genealogies, which minister questions rather than godly edifying, which is in faith. So do now says this is how I read these verses. Right. If if you want to if you believe that they're different, I would love to get into into that conversation with you and try to understand these verses are supposed to take nationality off the table. However, when I read these verses, these verses say to avoid genealogies over godly edification. So that would this would seem to apply if you're talking about people who are making nationality a salvation issue, which none of me and my peoples are. From Gideon to, to, to Yehukana, none of my peoples are. This doesn't seem like it would apply to them. And I, I would love to get some clarification as to why you think it does. As to why you think it does. Um, but getting into the remnant theology concept, right? The sister asked, where is nationality in the doctrine of Christ or the or the apostles? Well, we're going to get into this a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm going to try to make this swift and not too, too long. Um, but please, please double check what I'm saying and fact check what I'm saying. And if you think if you think I'm incorrect, let me know where you think I'm incorrect. We can deal with that. But from the doctrine of Christ, right? Uh, Matthew 10, 1 through 7, you got Jesus appointing 12 disciples and tells them not to go into the way of the Gentiles. And it says ethnos there. 
or to enter in the cities of the Samar uh, Samaritans. But they're instructed to go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, preaching the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Again, that's Matthew 10, 1 through 7. Matthew 28, 19 through 20, it specifies this. Go ye therefore and teach the nations, ethnos, teaching them to observe all the things uh, whatsoever I have commanded you. This is the great commission. So in both situations, we see this. We see God differ or we, we see God and Jesus differentiating between um between this concept of, of the, who the Gentiles are and the house of Israel. And on one on the one hand, we're seeing this, right? We're seeing a two-step process. First, we're seeing um we're seeing uh, the disciples being sent to the Israelites. They're being told to avoid the Gentiles right off the top. Don't go to them first. Go to the, go to the lost house of Israel. And then after such, then they're being told, go ye therefore and teach the nations. So one one is being differentiated um, in terms of being Gentiles and Israelites. And in, in, in another way, it's being differentiated in terms of like, go teach one first and then go teach the other one second. So I'm seeing nationality being recognized there. Sis. I'm seeing is the house of Israel as a nation being recognized. And I'm seeing the Gentiles or the different ethnicities of the world being recognized. If 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 that's not what ethnos and all that means, to, like I would love to hear the breakdown, um, and I would love to hear any kind of argument. Um, we also see this with the apostles, and particularly with Paul, etc. Romans one and sixteen. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Again, that doctrine of Christ. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. So again, I'm seeing the same concept being being uh, uh, echoed by Paul in the sense to where like the gospel was taught to the Jews first, as 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 uh, Jesus did in Matthew 10, and then also to the Greek or to the Gentiles, etc. Um, as with Matthew 28, the Great Commission. I'm all, I also see this here, where in Romans 11, 1, um, I hear Paul stipulate, I say, then hath God cast away his people? Uh, God forbid, for also I am an Israelite. Of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin and it further goes on to stipulate in verse 11 I say then have they stumbled that they should fall God forbid but rather through and talking about Israel okay God forbid but rather through their fall salvation has come unto the Gentiles the ethnos so in Romans 11 we're still seeing a differentiation between the Israelites and the Gentiles on a national level and the and the Gentiles being all the nations the ethnicities of the world uh, for it to provoke them to jealousy. Um, going forward, we see this in Romans 11 again, because this is a real important chapter, family. Because um, there, there's this constant, again, so the, 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 we're seeing the nations being recognized consistently. Consistently, consistently, consistently. Whether it's Israelite or it's other nations. We're seeing the recognition of nationality there. And we're seeing the, the distinction between nationality. Not just recognition, but distinction. But it goes on to say this, because I think this is really, really important for people to understand. Uh, please go check out Romans 11. Romans 11 is a fantastic chapter on this concept. But it says in uh, uh, Romans 11, 12. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them, the riches of the Gentiles, again, the ethnos, how much more their fullness? Verse 15. For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, again, talking about the Israelites, the casting away of the Israelites, the fall of the Israelites, be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? Talking about them being gathered back in again. For if the first root be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. Going further, verse 18. Boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Verse 21, for if God spared not the natural branches, take heed lest he also spare not thee. Verse 24, for if thou wert cut off the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these which be the natural branches be grafted into their own olive tree? Going further. Verse 25. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery. Ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits. 
lest ye should be wise in your own conceits that blindness in part is happened to Israel again national recognition to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles again national recognition uh, uh, recognition comes in that the blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles comes in verse 26 and so all Israel shall again national recognition shall be saved as it is written there shall come out of Zion or Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob Again, ethnic national recognition all over the place here. Verse 28, as concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. But as touching election, again, this is the nation of Israel. They are beloved for their father's sakes. They are beloved for their father's sakes. So there's the national recognition all the way through this chapter. And it's saying, check this out, as the Gentiles don't boast against the natural branch. They fell in order for you to receive righteousness. But if you can get it, don't act like they can't get it. If if fall if their falling gives you salvation, how much more powerful and meaningful is, is their gathering and awakening going to be? Therefore, don't boast against the natural branch. Don't boast against the natural branch. And so I would I would really like to understand. I've asked this before, fam. Like so, 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 so faithful, so, so cherry. Um G Con, Kevin G, Vocab, Adam Coleman. Like, so please break down what does it mean biblically to not boast or to boast against the natural branch? What is that? What is that offense? What is that offense? And how should you avoid doing it? I would really love to know the answer to that. To that. I think a lot of people would. I think a lot of people would. again so this is going into remnant theology so i'm talking about the election stuff there right so we, we just heard what said israel was elect with, with, with something concerning their election right so i'm going to touch on something that that again this is where um we're talking about prophecy at this juncture right and this is part of what we talk about in, in, in our remnant theology so matthew 24 29 through 31 31 we have this event where after the tribulation the sun and moon will be darkened stars will fall and the heavens will shake the sign of the Son of Man will be in the heavens. Angels with the trumpet sound shall gather the elect from the four winds. This is in, again, Matthew 24, 29 through 31. Again, doctrine of Christ, I would assume. Mark 13, 24 through 27. After, again, after the tribulation, the sun and moon will be will be darkened. Sun, uh, uh, stars will fall and the heavens shaken. The Son of Man in the clouds. Angels shall, shall gather the elect from the four winds, uh, etc. Same, same event, basically, right? Again, doctrine of Christ. Luke 21, 25 through 28, signs in the sun, moon, and stars, heaven shall be shaken, the son of man is in the cloud, son of man in the clouds, and, and redemption is not, talking about Israel. So a lot of Christians are, uh, in modern times look, look at these verses having to do, to do with a rapture event. Um, but in remnant theology, we talk about this being a gathering of the, re the righteous remnant of, of, uh, of Israel and um, the nations, the righteous remnant of Israel and the nations. And so um, not in the clouds or not all that kind of stuff, but we're talking about in like the land, in, in the land of Israel, in the, by the holy mountain, etc. Um, and so we're going to show how this connects to, to Revelation and also to the book of Isaiah. But in Revelation 6, 12 to 14, we get the sun becomes black, the moon becomes blood, the stars of heaven fall, the heavens, the, the heaven departs as a scroll when it's rolled together. Verse seven, uh, chapter seven, one through eight. There are four angels holding back the four winds. Another angel with the seal of God cries with a loud voice, and all the angels seal one hundred and forty-four thousand men of the tribe of Israel. Again, Israel being nationally recognized again um, in in the Book of Revelation. Going forward, in verse seven, uh, uh, verse nine of chapter seven. It says, after this, I beheld and lo, a great multitude which no man could number of all nations. Again, ethnos. Again, ethnos, the Gentiles, the ethnicities of the world, and kindreds are people, and people and tongues stood before the throne, and therefore the Lamb uh, clothed with robes and palms in their hands. Verse 10, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne uh, uh, and unto the Lamb. Going further, verse 16, they shall hunger no more, 
neither thirst anymore, neither shall the sunlight on them, nor any heat. Um, now I'm bringing this up because this is this is language straight out of Isaiah 49. Straight out of Isaiah 49. That this multitude of nations, etc., whatnot, when they get dealt with, they, they shall they shall no longer hunger, or they shall not hunger nor thirst, neither shall the heat nor sun smite them. For he that hath mercy on them shall lead them, even by the springs of water shall he guide them. Is this talking about the same people in the same events? Is it talking about the same people? Let's find out. Isaiah 49, 6. I'm just going to pull out a few verses from this. And I, again, just like I, I would advise everyone go read all of chapter uh, 11 of Romans. Read all of chapter 49 from Isaiah. This is a really good chapter. They're both good chapters. And he said in verse 6, and he said, it is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribe of Jacob and to restore the preserved of Israel. I will also give thee for a light unto the Gentiles, the Goy, the Goyim, that thou may be my salvation to the end of the earth. Um, there's a lot to unpack in that one verse. I'm not going to do it here. I'm going to do it on another video, um, but there's a lot to unpack that there. And I want people to, to remember that. Um, Isaiah 49 and 8. Thus saith the Lord in an acceptable time, have I heard thee and in a day of salvation have I helped thee and I will preserve thee and give thee for a covenant of the people to establish the earth, to cause to inherit the desolate heritages. Um, so this concept, I will give thee for a covenant of the people. This sounds consistent with what we just read in Romans 11 about about Gentiles receiving salvation through the fall of the Israelites. It seems like a consistent concept to me. It seems like a super consistent concept to me. But going forward. Verse 10. They shall not hunger nor thirst, neither shall the heat nor sun smite them. For he that has, hath mercy on them shall lead them, even by the springs of water shall he guide them. Verse 22. Thus saith the Lord God, behold, I will lift up my hand to the Gentiles, the Goy, and set up my standard to the people, and they shall bring thy sons, talking about the Israelites, they shall bring thy sons and daughters in their arms, and thy daughters shall be carried on their shoulders. So in, 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 uh, in Isaiah, there's an event to where there's a, a, a gathering of the Israelites by the Gentiles. And we see this this concept, they shall not hunger nor thirst, neither shall the heat nor sun smite them concept happen. And in Revelation, we see the same concept, that there is a gathering of Israelites and the Gentiles. And that this concept is being said, they shall not, they shall no longer hunger, etc. Same, same. Same, same. Um, Going to start wrapping this up, family. Oof, already at the two hour mark. How y'all how y'all holding up there? I'm missing out on a lot of comments. I gotta go check up on. But cognitive consistency. We're gonna talk about the consistency of the arguments being put forth, right? So if the doctrine of Christ takes nationality off the table, then we should expect direct language from Christ condemning, um, identifying as any nation whatsoever, which we do not see in the text. Again, if, if the doctrine of Christ takes nationality off the table, then we should expect direct language from Christ condemning, identifying as any nation whatsoever, again, which we do not see. We should not expect to find Christ using language differentiating between Gentiles and Israelites, as we do in Matthew 10, 1 through 7, or giving a commission to teach Gentiles, Matthew 28, 19 through 20. Um, there shouldn't be any language differentiating nation from nation in any way shape or form we should expect christ to use language like the people of the earth or the families of the earth or all mankind etc not gentiles and israelites etc instead we see the doctrine of christ confirming that it was sent to the jew first then to the gentiles a consistent biblical principle which you also see confirmed in romans If Titus 3 and 9 and Timothy 1, 1 and 4 take nationality off the table, 
then we should expect to see apostles cease to personally identify themselves and other people by their nations. We should we should expect to see apostles cease to personally identify themselves and other people by their nation. We should not expect to find the apostles uh, using language, identifying themselves or other people by nationality, as in Romans 1 and 16 or Romans 1 and 11 or 11 and 1. Again, as in Romans 1 and 16 and as in Romans 11 and 1. We should not expect to see prophecy, future tense concepts in the Bible of, uh, uh, of Revelation speaking about national identification of Israel or Gentiles, as we do in Revelation 7 and 4 uh, and 7 and 9. If nationality is taken off the table and heretical, then we should not expect to see a warning to Gentiles as the grafted branch to not boast against the natural branch of Israel, as we do in Romans 11, 18, Romans 11, uh, 24 through 25. Again, that's just if we're keeping it consistent, fam. So that's the extent of the presentation. Uh, but again, family, just 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 to keep it super super real, if we're gonna keep it consistent in terms of who we're talking about, in terms of uh, who's being heretical over this skin doctrine, identifying as Israel and etc. and nationality, etc. 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 Okay, we got to start applying this consistently now. So. Um, all those Christian groups that I mentioned, the Roman Catholics, the Irish Catholics, the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, the Eritrean Orthodox Church, um, the Russian Orthodox, the British Orthodox, the Assyrian Orthodox, the Assyrian Orthodox, all that. They all got to get called out. We need to see the equal amount of videos about them as you do about people um, who are Messianic Israelites, etc. And on top of that, I need, I need to see you going at Jews for Jesus. To be in order to be consistently, I mean, I mean, the same amount of videos, the same in order for it to be a consistent ideology. I need to see you going to people like 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 uh, Rabbi Harry Rosenberg for, for having the gall to teach to say that there's there's African-American Israelites that descend from from Jews of, of West Africa, etc. The same thing, the same thing about uh, about Rabbi Shapiro. He says the same thing and he, he messianic Jew. So you got two reasons to go with it. He's a messianic Jew calling himself a Jew and then got the nerve to say that there's there's uh, there's there's uh, African-American uh, African-American Jews, African-American uh, Israelites. And that and that one of the reasons why they're not happy with the church is because they're from the nation of Israel. And the church isn't satisfying their needs. I need to see you going to people like Matthew Nolan. Who teaches the same concept down in Australia and whatnot. Preacher. I need to see you going to people like, man, okay, this is a big, like, I really do need to see the equal measures and equal weights dealing with this whole crypto Jewish concept amongst the Hispanic population in the Americas. Because it's not a small thing happening at all. At all. You got people who are saying that they descend from an inquisition. Who are being persecuted through an inquisition who are now finding out that they're that they are the people of israel etc and again leaving the catholic church in droves in droves i need to see the same thing like so my man amari stoudemire uh you know what i'm saying uh, uh aka jehoshaphat like his his actual name now is jehoshaphat um i believe ben avraham he is now an Israeli resident. He converted. Um, he's a Messianic Jew. I don't see nobody beefing with him. I don't see nobody. Same thing with my man, he's in black. I don't see nobody beefing with him. Like, so, okay, so check this out. Me, Nassim Black, and Alizar, all from the same state. Me and Alizar used to live in Tacoma and Hilltop. This dude used to live in Seattle. Alizar and Sakari, they go at him all day, all night. 
I actually beef with Sakari on some of their beliefs, right? And I got again no issue going to one with Israelites. But me and Sakari are getting lumped up in the in the same boat. But but my man is Sin Black identifies as as a Jew. Converted to being a Jew. Not even not even a messianic Jew with that. No shots fired. None whatsoever. It does, it's not being it's not consistent in terms of, of ideology. Uh, but with that family. Um, again, these are not this is not me bucking shots at, at Sister Cherry. This is me really trying to get down to the, to the brass tacks. Of this thing. Like, so are we being sincere? Or are we not being sincere? Are we being logically consistent? Or are we being logically inconsistent? Because if we're being consistent, the, the, the equal scales got to apply. The equal scales got to apply. Um, so with that, family, I appreciate you for your time. Uh, I pray all is well with you and yours. And with that, uh, again, I appreciate you for for, 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 com for coming through. I pray something you found you found something edifying. If let me know what you think down below. If you think I'm I'm being too soft, let me know. If you think I'm being too too uh, too hard, let me know. If you think I'm I'm missing the if you think I'm missing the mark completely, let me know. If you think I'm hitting the mark, I, please let me know. Um, but at the end of the day, family, um, this is about being real with ourselves and with and with each other, because uh, we're, we're all grown and like like I keep consistently telling people, if I had never read the bible picked up the bible heard anything about the bible in my life and my first interaction was watching the ua community go at israelites and vice versa would it make me want to pick up the bible and put it down and i'm going to tell my ua family like look man like you're pushing a lot of israelites away that that wanted to work with you that wanted to work with you so maybe maybe your your uh, apologetics is not making people pick up the Bible so much. It, it it that might be the case. That might be why the Israelite numbers are growing, because like they might not not everybody satisfied with with the uh, with Juneteenth and Black History Month as, as their culture. A lot of people want to connect to something deeper than that. Hence, people like me went to go find out about my Fulani Yoruba links and in, in, in uh, my Moorish links, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And cultural ties and, and concepts and all that type of stuff and and again so stay tuned for my man like like me bringing on people like get on israel etc whatnot to where he's going to break down the whole presentation where he, where he connects he connects to african israelites and whatnot some people want a deeper culture there's nothing wrong with that and we should be able to have a slow respectful conversation about that particular particularly again if 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 you want us to take you seriously and this is just being real if you want us to take you seriously if you want anyone to take you seriously you got to be ideologically and logically consistent so i keep saying like i'm not going to deal with the trinitarian like i would a unitarian i'm not going to apply unitarian doctrine all right so just because a, 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 a trinitarian says they believe in one god i'm not gonna say well, okay well you're obviously unitarian no you got you got your own trinitarian belief system so if like there, there we, I understand that there is a diverse community amongst Christians. So I'm not going to blanket statement all of them in terms of what they believe. A Unitarian does not believe in the Trinity. A Trinitarian does. One West is one West Israelites believe in in a, in, a, in a nationality salvation doctrine. Okay, so-called moderates do not. It's it's just, it's just that simple. So if 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 we don't, then why are we being painted with the same broad brush as? As one West Israelites, you're gonna, you're not gonna, you're not going to. That doesn't a, it doesn't seem righteous, and b, it seems like, it seems like y'all got this model going to where you, you're gonna paint people with a broad brush, and then when people rightly defend themselves and try to differentiate themselves against the people, uh, against the extremists that you're that you're you're lumping them up with, that then now the UA community is gonna begin to feign um, being attacked. Um, and feign like there's some kind of a, a emergency going on um and be like oh see check like like on some caring like some caring christianity type stuff to where like like to where like you're gonna make the attack when people defend themselves now you're acting like the victim and then you just rinse and repeat that doesn't that's 
yo, if, if that's what y'all want to do, cool, but just say so. Just say so. Because because otherwise, again, you got people when people like me and you hooking on and them are trying to tell you this stuff. We're the ones that that, that, that tried to work with y'all. Right. So we're the ones that you turn into the Dante's to be like, we don't want to deal with y'all. I got no reason to deal with y'all, etc. I'll say that one more time. Like you're making Dante's happen because you have people like us trying to come at you and come at you and build real cool. But like, no, for the mere fact that we identify as Israel, we got to be all this other stuff. And then and then we're going to be called out like we're even more crazy because we're trying to call you out for being inconsistent. I'm like, fam, come on now. Stop. it. Let's have a grown conversation on the thing. Let's have a grown conversation about the thing. Like, so if I can if I can respectfully deal with you, Cherry, and sit on your panel when you're telling me that I'm that I'm not safe and I'm not, I'm not cussing nobody. I don't raise my voice and that type of stuff. If you can see me go at one West Israelites and, 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 and how they do with Christians, and you can say that I have integrity about that. Cool. Apply that same integrity to what I'm saying here. And just walk me through all this stuff that's being said, because it's not consistent in any way, shape or form. Biblically or logically. And if you think I'm wrong, hey, I'm all ears. Let's walk this out, because what we should at least be able to do is at least be able to have a conversation where we can agree to disagree in part ways peacefully and not just be throwing shot. Like, so, again, I don't care about about uh, convincing the urban apologist community to accept my identity or like I'm not in this for that. Anyway, I'm, I'm in this for, for respect in communities, right? I want my community to be respected when they walk down the street. So I try to keep my, my arguments consistent, logical, factual. I don't try to speak past my facts or, or my sources, any of the type of stuff, right? Um, and I try to hold um, the urban apologist community or anyone else who who is who was who was who was uh, bucking shots at my community to the same standard. To the same standard, no more, no less. And again, there's no hatred, no animosity. I got Christians in my family. Ain't nobody beef. Like again, we work with Christians. Not all Christians are the same. Like Dante says the same thing. I'm saying the same thing. I'm about to outro this video with some with some with some music from my brother from the war machine. Who is a Christian? Minister How. Again, Minister How got no issue saying that, hey, my brothers could be Israel. I got I got no I got no reason to definitely say that they're not. And all we've ever asked, the, the most we've ever asked from, from, from anybody in the UA is, hey, can if you can't definitively prove that we're not Israel, which you cannot do, can you at least at least not say that? Can you at least not say that you're definitely that that you ain't no damn Jews and that's facts? Because again, if you want to analyze the facts, we can do that, but it doesn't seem like you want to have that conversation. It seems like it seems like you got used to talking to one West. And that you're just stuck on one West, that you got one West beer goggles on. And then anything is like gotta be one West. That anything is like gotta be one West. But that's simply not the case, just like there's not one type of Christian. So um, I'm going to try to engage my, my brothers and sisters in the UA community on an honest dialogue on, on this topic. However, it's going to it's going to show itself real quickly if if my brothers and sisters are not trying to communicate in dialogue with in good faith. In good, particularly with people like me. Because there's no reason not to. I've had all kind of peaceful sit down and dialogue with people from 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 different communities and whatnot. There's no reason why that can't continue. But at the same point in time, like these questions need to be answered. If they're not going to be answered in a way that answers themselves. So, but I will stop belaboring the point. This video is already long enough. I pray y'all have a wonderful day, family. Again, I pray y'all found something edifying. Uh, with that, I say peace and love. I like the way this feel, yeah. Let my soul cry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Minister.
We gon' speak from the heart on this one. I'm performing lyrical funerals, no obituary. I killed your boy and brought him back to life. Pet cemetery. My anointing not based on the tendons at a seminary. Scarlet witches, they attracted to the visionary. Everywhere I go, I bring the word with me. Missionary. Soldier drafted in the war machine, military. Pay attention, what I'm saying to you, legendary. You got the demeanor of a front desk secretary. That means you take the calls, but you don't make the calls. That's why you hate, cause ain't nothing fake about me at all. Now I dare you try to say that with a straight face. My delivery in tip top, great shape. I'm too advanced for you, light years, space age. No evolution for you, cavemen, stone age. I'm a thoroughbred, rock solid. I came from the bottom to the top, rock climbing. I grew up in the hood, pros and cons. That's that full court pressure when the Amalek roll out that stretch. Why can't you see it's not logical if you live diabolical? Boy, your point of view smaller than the hair follicle molecule. This for all of them that follow you, smoking all of them barbecue. When I pull up, your voice don't correct itself with no auto tune. I got a whole nother level that I can enter whenever I gotta deal with the devil. I pick a whole nother method. I hear a whole lot of yapping. They wanna see my reaction. Really, I hit in the community making it happen. I, I don't really think they understand the dilemma. They ain't looking at the man in the mirror. I can't say it in the clearer. The plan is very simple. It's time to start playing in the temple. Before somebody come and put the can on the temple. Reaching like a baby with his hand for the nipple. The Grand Reaper coming with his hand on the circle. In a van coming with a ram with it with the van coming get him. I am so glad that I changed up. Made it out of where I came from. Watch for the sliding hook of the slow ball, fast ball, and that change up. That ghetto lifestyle, it changed us. Go back to visit, it ain't changed much. Only different is now the way that my brain process information. And Satan, been after my life since day one. Let me say something. Only reason that I'm still out today, because God's grace is amazing. Just another raisin in the sun. Dream deferred when things occur. Now you get served right on the curb like a lemonade stand. I just gave you the benediction, let the whole church say amen.